All right, so it looks like it's 4.30, so we're going to get started. So welcome, everyone, and thank you all for joining the 33rd annual, the Hartford Ski Virtual Ski Spectaculars Nordic Skiing Dryland Basic Session. Uh, my name is Carolyn, and I'm a program manager with Move United, which is an organization that formed um, with the merger of Disabled Sports USA and Adaptive Sports USA. Uh, we are super grateful to the Hartford for their longstanding commitment and support of this event, allowing us to bring you this virtual opportunity. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping sessions, which you might have heard if you've been on any of the other sessions today. Um, all attendees are going to be on mute to minimize distractions, so please keep yourself on mute. Um, if you have any questions or want to um, have any concerns, anything like that, please put it in the chat and we will um, get to you uh, as quickly as we can. Um, please feel free to turn on your video using the camera button or the start video at the bottom of your screen. These sessions will be recorded, so if you don't want your video to be on or don't want us to see the inside of your house, that's totally cool. It's challenged by choice here. Um, if you haven't signed your media release, you're going to see um, a link to that in the chat. We would really appreciate you doing that. Closed captioning to this session has been enabled, so um, you're welcome to adjust the font as needed for you. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Beth Ann Chamberlain to get started, to get you moving and get you learning a little bit about Nordic. Cool. Thank you. Um, hopefully you can all hear me all right. Um, Again, my name is Beth Ann Chamberlain. I am one of the development coaches with the US Paralympics Nordic skiing team. I see a few familiar faces and names, which is great. Um, it's as close as we get these days. So um, I, I'll take anything I can get. Uh, but thanks to Move United for having me here. Um, I would love to be in Breckenridge with you all um, talking about Nordic skiing uh, next to the ski trail, but we'll have to wait till next year for that. Um, but I, I do look forward to, to, to being on snow with many of you moving forward. Um, so like I said, I'm a development coach with the US Paralympic Nordic skiing team. I'm here to talk Paralympic Nordic skiing. Um, so that is something I feel like I'm I'm fairly qualified doing and I love to do. And so um, we're also going to do a little moving because I, I don't do well just sitting for too long. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to actually start. Um, we're going to, I'm going to have scoot my chair back because I'm, we're, we're going to talk through this. I'm going to talk. I'm going to hear questions hopefully from you, but I also want to keep a little bit of, of movement because that's, that's what we're about. Right. So I do have, I'm going to get it wrong. My band. Anyone have their band here? Um, all right. Yes, I see some bands. All right. I want hands up high over your head, a little wider than shoulder width distance apart. I want you to pull down and uh, with your elbows and then pull back up. You can, I'm going to hold my hands a little closer together. Up overhead, pull down and back up and down. We're going to do about four more of these. We're just going to make sure there's a theme to our movements, right? Everybody's sitting in front of a Keep going with that, pull down, straight up. I want tall through the crown of your head, sitting up as tall as you can, pull down and wide with those elbows and back up. Everybody's sitting in front of a computer or phone right now, and we do it most of the day, which we're not meant to do. And so we're gonna do whatever we can to kind of wake up our back and our bring our shoulders back. There we go, all right. Set our band down, shake that out a little bit. We're gonna do one more thing. Hands overhead, I want your palms facing forward. I'm realizing I have to sit back a little further. All right, palms facing forward, hands over your head. Bring down goal posts, hands still forward. Flatten, palms are facing the ground. Extend, forward, pull back, fingertips up towards the sky, I'll reach overhead. Pull down, flatten, extend, pull back. Fingertips to the sky, overhead, pull down, fingertips forward, extend, and back. Keep going with that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself while we do this. So this is our movement, right? So I have um, had the honor to be working with this team, keep going, uh, since about 2012. That's the US Paralympics Nordic Skiing Team. Uh, working in biathlon and, and development primarily. Um, yep, keep going, nice work. Uh, I have had the honor to work with the team and be one of the coaches um, at both the Sochi Paralympics and the Pyeongchang Paralympics. Amazing team. I feel very lucky. Nice job, everyone, to be a part of that, to have been a part of that team. And I get to continue to work um, with an awesome 
group of people and athletes and coaches. And yeah, I love what I do. We're going to do a couple more. Um, I'm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I've lived in Maine and Colorado as well, but I'm a Minnesota native. Um, and so I, I, I get by my, uh, my accent, honestly. Nice job. Um, so I think there's probably a few more. One more. Forward, pull back, fingertips all the way up, pull down. All right. Okay, so Nordic skiing, we're going to keep moving here. I'm gonna, we're going to go back and forth. So we're going to pretend like we're skiing. So may, maybe some of you, I know some of you have Nordic skied before. Um, I want you to put your hands, swing your hands forward. Hands are shoulder width apart. Thumbs are up, pinkies are down. Right? Pretend like you have a ball in your hand. Actually, if you have the Hartford ball, I'm, I'm going to spare because it's going to block my view. You can take that and throw it down. Hands go back. Swing forward. Throw that ball. Pretend like you're throwing it down. You can throw it down and then swing forward. If you're throwing and catching, you can't get the back. But what we're doing, throw down, swing. This is double pulling. You're all cross-country skiing right now. So this is what the movement is, right? Our arm is a pendulum. And so hands are high, crunch, forward and up. Forward and up. Double pulling right there. There's a work phase and a recovery phase. A work phase and a recovery phase. Whether you're a standing skier or sit skier, you're doing this moment, motion, motion. Double pull. Now let's do a little quick ones, quick hands. 10, fast, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now big, big and long. Three, two. And one, all right, there. We're gonna work in a few more exercises here, but we gotta keep, keep things moving, right? Everybody here wants to move, that's why you're here. Um, not just because we like to sit in front of the cameras and computers, but um, we're connected this way. So I am thankful for that. So again, Nordic skiing, that's what I coach. Um, I have been very lucky to work with this team for a while. Um, but primarily my role right now in development is getting new people started. And so everybody on the screen, I know, again, a few familiar faces, familiar names. Um, I know some of you are doing it already, um, but I'm really excited um, to continue to work on growing our community. And everybody here in this call today, you are part of this community now. And so we wanna continue to build off of that. So I feel very lucky to call this my job. Um, building the development, um, the community of Paralympic Nordic skiing, Paranordic skiing. Um, Nordic skiing, I think we're going to talk about equipment a little bit, but skinny skis, right? We have edges. Don't let anyone think that we don't have edges. They're not metal. Um, and they, you know, they're not quite as uh, pronounced as your downhill skis. But these are our skinny skis, right? Cross country skiing. Um, Nordic skiing is actually any Nordic, any skiing that your heel is not attached. A little trivia there. Um, but we're cross country skiing for the Paralympic Nordic skiing team. U.S. Paralympics Nordic skiing um, involves both cross country racing, cross country skiing, and the sport of biathlon. Um, biathlon being cross country skiing and rifle marksmanship. For um, Paralympics biathlon, we shoot um, air rifles at 10 meters. Um, five shots at a time. Um, I'm totally biased. I was a biathlete before I was coach. Um, so it's just one of the greatest sports ever. It's pretty fun. Um, and so we get to coach and our athletes, many of them um, on our national team and those are competing, um, compete in both the sport of cross country skiing and biathlon. So um, we're pretty unique in that we kind of have two sports under the same umbrella. So, um, but we're going to talk uh, we can talk about biathlon, but we're going to primarily talk about cross-country skiing here. And so cross-country skiing is definitely an endurance sport. Um, what do I mean by that? Um, well, we do have races that are called sprint races. They're not 100-meter dashes. Um, they're uh, the shortest race that we have in, on, a, on the Paralympic side is something that's called the cross-country sprint. And for sit skiers, that is 800 meters. Um, Standing skiers, it's a little bit longer, about a thousand. Uh, and the longest race we have is 20 kilometers. And so 20K, we do everything in kilometers. Um, at, we're, yeah. And um, we're, we're, we're at sweat, just over 12 miles. So it's definitely an endurance sport. It is a sport that requires great strength um, and great fitness. And it will use everything you've got. 
which I think is one of the both challenges and one of the greatest parts about it. And so um, that's what we're looking at for competition. Now to rewind a little bit, again, I said, I'm here to help develop and grow the community of cross country skiing and did that of Paralympic Nordic skiing, Paranordic skiing. Um, that to me means also, yes, those that want to race and be compete against the best in the world and climb that ladder step by step, because it can be a long ladder, um, but it's pretty cool to be there. But then there's this whole other spectrum in between from when you start to where you want to go. And that path looks different for everybody. This is a sport that you can enjoy out your backyard with your family, with a high school cross country ski team, um, with a community club, with an, a Paralympic um, sport club, um, and also at high competitive levels internationally racing all over the world. Um, it's a sport for everybody. It's, um, there are adaptations, we're gonna talk about different equipment and different ways to do it, um, that um, allows everybody to get out there. And, oh gosh, um, oh, sorry, my screen did something funny. Um, <laughs> you can hear me. Um, and so one of the messages that I really wanna drive home today is that you all uh, can be cross country skiers if that's what you want to be. Um, and also with that, I want you all to start thinking right now that not only are you a cross country skier, but you're an athlete. Um, you're an athlete because you wanna work at something and you wanna improve. And whether that's improve to go ski without any pain or ski a hundred meter loop in perfect, with perfect technique or ski a 50 kilometer marathon race, or race with the best in the world. Um, there's lots of different places on that line. Um, and, and there's a place for everybody. And so everybody has their own spot. There's no right or wrong. It's all about challenging yourself, getting out there um, and enjoying the sport because it has to be fun as well. Um, one of the things, in addition to this sport being something that I feel everybody can enjoy um, is, that it's also a, a sport that gets you outside. And maybe that's, I'm not just saying that because everybody has to be outside right now. Um, <laughs> but it's a good selling sport, point for cross country skiing right now. Um, it's, it's a sport that uh, one of the things, yeah, that really is a highlight for me is that it gets me outside, it gets me in the trails. Um, I see places that I would never see before. And I think that's true for anyone um, it's a definite highlight of, of, the, of getting involved in the sport and, and going to different places, whether they're just down the street or they're halfway around the world. There's amazing places to be seen. And some of them, uh, you know, getting on cross country skis is one of the only ways you can see it. So um, that's a huge draw. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I see names and faces on this, this call right now that I've traveled to, I've had the honor of getting to travel all over to to do different clinics and ski with uh, many place, people in different places. And um, it's definitely been a highlight of mine um, in the work that I do and uh, continue. I look forward to doing more in the future, but um, also really look forward to meeting many of you, skiing with many of you and hearing stories of your own Nordic adventures moving forward um, as you try the sport out and, and get involved and, and see where it takes you, see where you want it to take you. Um, cause this is your journey. And so it's all about that. Um, okay. So are we ready for a little more movement? Are we doing all right? Um, let's just do a couple shoulder circles. Again, here's a the theme. We're all sitting like this because we sit in a computer. We're going to sit up nice and tall. We're going to bring our shoulders back. Just keep, let your hand, hands hang down, shoulders up towards our ears. We're really good at that, right? I'm good at that standing in the cold back and then down. Oh, that's how it's supposed to feel. Up, back, down. A couple shoulder circles, front to back. And a couple deep breaths along with it. Because we all need to move a little bit. Right? Here we go. All right. Well, let's shake that out. We're going to talk a little bit about equipment. I hope to answer some questions. Um, know that, you know, any one of the topics we could, I could go on and on and on about today. Um, hopefully give you a little taste um, and give you enough information to know where you can go next to find out more. Um, so cross country skiing, we're on skinny skis. Um, from uh, the, again, 
couple things I want to um, say. I, I work with U.S. Paralympics and Nordic skiing, right? I'm working with athletes that are racing, but I'm also working to build this community. When I talk about the different classes within, that is within kind of the Paralympic umbrella and how they define. We have standing skiers, visually impaired skiers, and sit skiers. So I'll go through the equipment with that. Having said that, keep in mind that there are athletes that are going to fit in between all of those things. And there, there's skiing for everybody. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, I kind of break it down in that way. Um, but everybody is on skinny skis. Um, we have classic skiing and skate skiing. Classic is in the tracks. Many of you have probably seen that. That's the more traditional. Um, sometimes called traditional skiing, you're in a set track and you're, it's, it's more of a running motion, right? It's the best way if you are brand new to skiing and you are uncertain and you wanna just get out there and see what it's about, classic skiing is a good way to get started. It gets you feel, you get the slipperiness of the ski underneath you, feeling the boot and whatnot. Um, skate skiing is done on the corduroy, so more of a track that looks like what you'd see on an alpine hill. So the, those groomers are grooming the um, skate track, which is usually right next to the, the classic tracks on the side. And you have your skate grooming, which is that corduroy, that nice, you know, think big mountain um, grooming. Um, and that is a skating motion. And so that's a skating back and forth. Standing and visually impaired skiers on the Paralympic side ski in both techniques, classic skiing and skate skiing. Um, I think, but different feel for each. Um, I, if you've done one, I would encourage you to try the other. Um, if you're starting out, um, again, classic skiing is generally an easier technique to get out and just try. Um, but some people are also very much drawn to the skate skiing. Um, and I'll, I'll say this, everybody thinks skate skiing is faster. It is. But I will say, if you are a student of the sport and you really want to dial in your classic skiing, nothing is more technical than classical skiing. Um, there's a lot of little fine tuning if you really want to go on it. You can get on them and kind of almost walk and shuffle and feel very comfortable and enjoy the trails and have an awesome time. Um, but if you really want to get into it, you can get really technical with classic skiing. And I think that's one of the things that's often misunderstood. Um, I will say for biathlon, um, biathlon being the shooting and skiing together, the competition, we do all skate skiing for that, um, for those races. And so, um, uh, yeah, so I was a biathlete. I definitely am a little stronger in my skate technique, but I, I do my best in classic skiing too. Um, and um, yeah. Both great. Uh, skis are different. Boots are different. Uh, a classic ski is going to be a softer sole. Or a classic ski is going to be softer. It's going to have a softer tip. It's going to be a little longer. It's meant to follow a track. And so those grooves in the snow um, are what this ski is. And so it's going to have a tip. This is a classic ski. It's got a little, it usually has more of a point. Um, and it it's going to follow that track and so it's not going to bump you out. Um, it's meant to be go front to back, right? We're not pushing side to side. So a skate ski may look almost the same, but it's going to be structurally a little different. Just a little background. It's going to have a higher skate skis have a harder, stiffer sidewall because it's meant to be pushed side to side. Also the camber or the shape of the ski, if this is on a flat, or they're a little bit different. So they're flexed a little differently. Um, but the, the bindings, um, bindings are slightly different from skate to classic um, as well, but you can, if it's the same boot and binding system, you can fit them interchangeably. Um, so classic, the base of a classic ski. Um, Bases of all the skis look pretty much the same. Usually one track, Rosignol skis have two tracks or two grooves. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Um, these are probably, oh, there's even a little bit of wax in there, right? Pretty smooth. We spend a lot of time when we're racing on making these, the bottoms of these skis really fast, put a lot of money into them. It's kind of crazy, the whole waxing side of it. But we can keep it pretty simple and you can go pretty fast. Um, by keeping things simple. Classic ski, if I'm gonna classic, I'm gonna put what's called kick wax or there's gonna be kind of mohair or fish scales down the middle of it. That's gonna give me um, the compression, the, the 
traction to compress this ski down on the snow and kick, you're actually kicking forward to go down the track. A skate ski is gonna be smooth like this on the whole length of the, the, the bottom of the ski. Uh, again, we could have a whole series on equipment, but we'll keep it pretty simple here. Um, poles, we'll just show you the pole. Lots of different kinds, he's a grip. If you get into this for a while, invest in some nice grips. Not the simple straps, but the ones that go around your whole hand, because you'll thank me for it. And I'll say you're welcome. There's a strap, pull, pretty simple. This is a sit ski pull. All it is that means is that it's shorter. It also could be my son's pull. Well, they're a little tall for him yet. Um, yeah, skate. Um, so lots of different kinds of poles when you're starting out get something that's durable. Um, you don't want it to break. Um, and yes, falling is a part of skiing. Um, and so if we all fall, we learn to do it gracefully and then we get up and we're stronger for it. So uh, durable poles are a good thing to start. So standing skiing, visually impaired skiing, if you're, so when I say standing skiing, an athlete, they may be skiing without a pole, with one pole, with a prosthetic on a lower leg, um, or above knee amputees that can also ski. Um, knees get a little tricky, um, but I'm not the best on learning the latest with pros prosthetics, but I know they continue to blow my mind. And so, um, yeah, it's continuing to get better and better. And so you can see ski, ski standing up. Um, uh, sit skiers, um, we are going to use the same skis. This ski can be used, if I were to go out skiing, I'm gonna put, this is how it clips in, right? My boot, toe goes in right there. Clip that down, my heel is loose. I should grab a boot. Um, and I'm locked in. If I am sit skiing, um, I'm not gonna be sit skiing this ski, but here's a sit ski. I brought the littlest one I have because I figured it would have help. There are a lot of different versions of sit skis. And there's a lot of different people out there, right? That want to ski. So they're all designed for different people. I'm showing you one example today, very simple one. Um, this nice little mini guy. Um, I'd sit in it, but I wouldn't fit in this one. Um, <laughs> sit ski, right? So here's the bottom, right, of the sit ski. And I'm going to set that there. If you looked on my ski, here's my binding. See this little app? additional black block. Oops, I got a kitty cat that's gonna jump in the screen. Um, this is put on this ski specifically for sit skis. And so this is a system that, um, there are many different systems out there. This is one that we use with US Paralympics Nordic Skiing. And we worked with many clubs to try to get this available to them and their equipment they have as well. Um, many clubs have it already. So if you can see, this slides in here and the toe, I may have, I not, might not be able to do it with this. Ready? Let's see my notebook. Binding goes up, this gets pushed down. Let's see if I can do it, this angle. I'm not gonna get it in, but anyways, this is your sit ski on your ski. And so, um, uh, there you go, skier standing or skier sitting, they're on the same ski. The only thing I'll say is that if you have a classic ski um, that's classic waxed for standing and you have a block on it to put a sit ski on it, you don't, the, class, the skate ski, the sit skier does not need kick wax. Keep those bottoms nice and smooth for our sit skiers. Um, so, um, bringing back the sit ski. This is a very simple ski, right? You're gonna sit in it, athlete is gonna have their feet down, put their feet right on the foot plate. Um, you'll see athletes that have their feet underneath it. You'll see athletes that have their, a system coming out with your feet out in front of you. Different angles here, you can have your butt really low, your butt level. Um, if you wanna see a good collection of sit skis, come to Ski Spec next year and come to the Nordic Center and we'll show you our whole lineup because we get a whole collection of all kinds of different sit skis. We've got skis for everybody. Um, different bucket sizes, different angles. Um, the basic idea is that we need to get any sit skier in a position that allows them to be comfortable and not feel super unstable, to be able to move, um, to be safe, right? So there's no rubbing. We wanna make sure that 
everything is, is safe with that positioning. Um, and then we want you in a position that allows you to use everything you've got. So we have athletes that have no core function. We have athletes that have full core function. And so that position of the position that they're sitting in is going to change depending on, on what they have and what they can use. We want athletes to be able to use everything we've got. So if so an athlete has full core function, but they've got their butt is way down here and their knees are way up high. I can't move because I'm sitting in a position. I can't use my core, right? So that's not a great position for that athlete. Um, it is a series of trial and error, like it is with all equipment, it seems, um, to figure out what the right exact um, fit is um, for each athlete. And so it's always our goal to have equipment, to get people to try different things and figure out what's right for you. Um, and then move on from there. But um, yeah, there's a ski out there for everybody. And if it doesn't exist, it can be made. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty fun. Um, I think, I think I have another shoulder exercise for us to do in the meantime. But um, before we do that, let's talk about, so we did the double pulling already, right? So um, standing skiers are going to double pull. Sit skiers are going to primarily and always double pull that motion that we did before, right? You're going to be in the track. You can ski in the track as a sit skier. You can ski out of the track as a sit skier. Um, the name of the game there, this sit ski, most sit skis don't have bricks. It's not something to be alarmed by, but it's something to know. And if you ever ski with me, um, and you're in a sit ski, we're going to, play some games on the snow initially, and then we're gonna fall over. <laughs> and we're gonna get back up. And then we're gonna go down a little hill together um, and to learn all the things. And again, we're not gonna go through every technique, um, but I will say that there are lots of good videos and an awesome Sitski instruction manual on the US Paralympics Nordic Skiing website that is available to everybody that outlines a bunch of things um, for people to try. Um, and safety components. Um, so sit skiing, sit technique. Um, we're going to cross country ski. We're again, we're on trails. We're going downhills. We're going uphills. We're going around corners. Um, and we're doing it for a length of time. And so um, we are an endurance sport and we're, we're a sport that requires um, using everything you've got. Um, we're going to be strong. We're going to get stronger the more we do it. Um, and hopefully everybody has the right clothing to stay warm and enjoy it because definitely clothing makes a difference because the one thing that you can't avoid if you're going to cross country ski is being in the cold. Um, and that doesn't mean to be a bad thing. Um, we've had whole, um, training sessions on how to best wear a hat. Um, and I love doing those things because you know, a hat is just another accessory. Um, so it's not something to, to avoid. Um, but we won't go into those details today. Um, yes, so we are a snowy sport. We are an endurance sport. If you want to get stronger, if you want to go get out in the woods, um, if you want to do something recreational or you want to compete um, and challenge yourself and see what you can do, um, there's a place for you in cross country ski, in the cross country ski world. Um, so I'm gonna put these skis aside before I drop them. And let's do one more little, uh, let's, shoo. oh, my band. Let's grab our bands, one more. Let's keep going with our shoulder exercises here. We're gonna take, um, I'm gonna move mine. Oops, unplug my computer. Um, we're crooked here, here we go. Is ready? I'm not a cinematographer, and I don't think I ever will be. Um, one, holding down by your waist. Arms out in front, we're gonna pull up and across and back down. Up and across and back down. Sit nice and tall, pull up. As you're doing this, I want you to be a hitchhiker thumb, right? And so I actually want your thumb to be up, hold it out there and come back across. Come across and down, across. All right, we gotta keep things even. If you can, let's switch sides. Hick hitchhiker's thumb. And if you don't have a band, you can absolutely still do this and pull up and across your body. 
it's still really, really great. This is good for our posture. It's good for us as skiers, all that good stuff. So band or no band, good stuff to do. Everybody, anyone feeling it a little bit in the mid back? Kind of warms up a little bit. Shake it out. All right. We'll get back to this. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna plug this in because I'm paranoid about my computer. Um, all right, here we go. All right. We talked equipment. You guys have an idea of what this sport is, right? Now, how do we do it? <laughs> it's the important part, right? It's like, oh yeah, it's great hearing about it all, but how do I actually do this? Um, cross country skiing, like I said, we it requires snow. Um, <laughs> in an ideal world, um, a world without COVID, all of us would be in ski spectacular right now, <laughs> enjoying all the snow. Um, years to come, we have those things to look forward to. So um, anyone on this call that is looking to get started and try out the sport of cross country skiing, um, the, there are a couple different things I want you to think about. Um, First thing is recognize that there has to be snow somewhere. It can be man-made snow. Um, it can be natural snow. You could live in the far north or you could live close to a cross-country ski area. Um, there are um, many, many different options um, for trying out the sport with clubs. And then in normal years, um, there are many events around the world, around the country that are designed for new athletes, for um, experienced athletes and for those that are continuing to train and, and want to get involved. Um, now, I think uh, Megan is putting up on the chat, sure she will, um, there we have an event page. Oh, I sent the recruiting link, but if you go to the US Paralympics Nordic Skiing website, there is an event page and we do our very best to post all events that we know of, whether that's something that's just for sit skiers, that's something that's for military, that's for all, for youth, you name it. We try to include everything. Everything we know about, we will put up on there. And so that is one place to start. Um, if you are looking to find out if there is a training camp or something nearby for you to be involved in. Um, there, I also, um, everybody, I'm sure, I don't know, I don't have a map of where everybody is, um, but I know um, that so many communities have Nordic ski groups and programming that are, are pretty small and maybe not known about unless you start asking. Um, and so go to your local adaptive sport program, um, go search out Nordic skiing in your area and, and start asking, um, asking if they have lessons, if they have equipment, um, learn what's available in your area. Um, they may not have everything. Um, they may not know a lot about sit skiing if you wanna sit ski, but if you know that they're there and that there are ski trails, there are other steps we can take to kind of fill in those gaps. And so again, first time experience, we need to get you equipment, have trails to go on and be safe. Ideally, you have some sort of instruction as well. Um, so if you call up your local Nordic Center um, and they have great grooming, they've got grooming, they've got trails, they don't know anything about sit skiing, um, you are going to fill out our athlete US Paralympics Nordic Skiing recruitment survey, which will be in the chat, right? shortly and you're gonna get a hold of me um you can also email me at uspnordic at gmail.com and we can talk we can talk equipment um we can talk i can talk to a club a program somewhere in the country that has cross-country skiing and knows nothing about sit skiing and i'm going to share with them everything that i have and i can provide for them we want to get you out there there actually is a lot there are many sit skiers sit skis out there with clubs that um, are not getting used because people don't ask about them. And so this is your homework. Well, your homework is to cross country ski um, sometime this winter, um, but start talking about it. So asking questions, you guys can grow the sport just as much as I can um, by just getting out there and trying it and talking to people and getting people to go with you. And Hey, I don't know how to do this, but um, I want to try it. Oh, you don't know how either. Let's go try it together. Let's go find someone that will give us some instruction. Local clubs um, 
we do have a lot of resources with U.S. Paralympics Nordic Skiing on the basics of how to sit ski. Um, that there's there are manuals on our website that you can find. Um, there is a great how-to with Move United as well with adaptive. Oh, I'm gonna get the name wrong. Um, uh, it's adaptive Nordic instruction, um, but their their resources are there, and so. Um, that we need to find equipment and snow to get on and the resources will fall into place and you can and there are people to ask so um, you can contact folks at Move United and they can always pass things on to me and I will happily talk with you connect with you uh, let's make these connections there are people all over the country that are excited to go ski with you guys um, and so my job and I feel very lucky is to help make some of those connections so in order to make that happen, we have to hear from you. So fill out the athlete survey, reach out to the Move United folks, let them know you're interested. Um, let's start making some of those connections. Um, in a normal year, there would be a big long list of all kinds of different um, events and training camps that are available. Um, it looks a little different this year. People are still figuring it out, but here's the thing is it, it's a great sport that we can do this winter. Um, we have to be safe about it. We have to be smart about it, um, but it can be done and there are people doing it. And um, if you're motivated to give it a try, then I believe strongly that um, then it, it can happen. Um, so uh, don't be deterred by not having everything in its place. As Nordic athletes, we have to be resourceful um, because uh, we're kind of, we're in, often in the shadow of alpine skiing because it is the big mountain and you can see it. Um, but we have just as much fun um, on the cross country side, believe me. Um, and I hope to get to be able to ski with many of you um, to, to prove that to you. Um, so, how are we doing? Um, I don't know if I, at this time, if there are any questions, I can go on in a couple different directions, but this might be a good spot for questions if there are any. Um, we don't have any in the chat yet. If maybe you have like a short activity and people want to type in a question while we do a short activity. Otherwise, yeah. I've got some questions I can do. However you want to keep this moving forward, Bethany. So let's do a little activity here and I'll, I'll chat a little because I'm, you know, I'm good at chatting about cross country skiing. Um, <laughs> um, all right, we're going to sit. We're doing everything sitting. Um, this is, you can thank uh, a coach of mine. that She was Russian. She's amazing. She was like a world champion. Um, arms out to your side. Palms are facing up. Fingers, tips nice and wide. Curve, tap your shoulders. Swing through and flip. Oops, I need to go back a little further. So this is what we're doing. Swiss and up. Tap your shoulders, extend, flip your hands so your palms are facing the sky. Make, uh, what is it, like an M? So your M and back. And this is, this is our rhythm. Tap your shoulders, extend, flip, palms facing. Tap your shoulders, flip. And we're just gonna do this. This is just like a great little, if you're ever cold on the side of a ski trail or anywhere, um, we're just gonna do this for a minute and we're gonna see how we feel. Um, so we'll see if there are some questions, um, but I'll talk a little bit about, um, I mentioned, keep going with this. So remember when we're doing this, our arm is in one plane. So we're not coming forward. We, all, we don't want to swim here. If your hands were straight out and it stays in one plane, so it stays in line, you're just reaching up around, making kind of like a circle as you tap that shoulder and then come forward, extend it long, you do kind of a twist, and then flip. Tap, twist, flip. Tap, twist, flip. And we're just gonna keep doing this. Nice rhythm. All right, so I'm just gonna go right ahead and say, since you are all on this call, and this is about Nordic skiing, um, you guys are about one step away from all becoming Nordic skiers, if you're not already. Um, with that, um, not only do I want you to think of yourself as a Nordic skier? Um, I want you to think of yourself as an athlete. And what that means to me is that you are treating your body in a way, your body is a tool for you to do and perform and to enjoy an activity that um, is cross country skiing. All right, we can keep going with this. How's everybody doing? Anyone arms kind of wobbly? 
This is to warm you up. All right, ready? Okay, we're gonna go on with that. Now, now back to our double pull. See, the trick with that is, that little movement that we just did, is it should get you tired enough, you have to have enough room here so you don't hit anything, is that you don't wanna move your elbows. We are a pendulum, right? And so you should feel, it should be really easy to swing. Everybody wants to work really hard, move here and extend, but really we're just swinging, this is your pendulum. If you had a marker in your hand, you would be making one big smiley face, back and forth, boom, boom. It'd be a little taller on the front, the smiley face. Kind of a smirk. I don't know if I can do that. A little higher on one side, right? There's our double pulling. So this gets us nice and tired. Do this for a long time, get really tired. I had to do that once upon a time. And then we get right into double pull. All right. Um, we'll see if there's questions, but I'll expand a little bit about this whole athlete mindset. Um, thinking of yourself as an athlete, treating your body as a tool, um, treating it well, right? So it's all the good things that we want to do anyways. One thing that I love about getting involved in this sport and starting to do it is that it kind of builds on itself. It's almost like, it's not addicting, but it's, it's fun, right? It feels good to get outside and to move, to do so when it's cold outside, right? It's not super intuitive. Everybody wants to curl up by the fire and stay warm, but it feels even better when you go outside and then you come back in and then you get a warm up, right? And so in order to do that and to do that well, and I'm, when I say well, that's not necessarily for just high performance, that's to like, maximize your enjoyment of it, right? Make it um, feel good for your body. Um, this should be fun. Um, you want to include your stretching. You want to include your um, good hydration, fueling yourself really well. Um, there are so many amazing resources out there for all of that, but I think it all starts with just thinking to yourself and calling yourself an athlete. And that's where it begins. Um, I'm an athlete. I want to take care of myself. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to, you know, when you can call up a friend, <laughs> meet up outside, socially distanced with masks, all this new terminology that we have to do. Safety is number one. Um, but to really see yourself and those that you're working with as athletes and treat yourself that way. And uh, I think it's a really powerful thing. I think it's very addicting. It's awesome to encourage everyone in the group you're around to do so. Um, it's, it's just a great part of the sport. Um, I mean it wholeheartedly that, you know, I've been involved in this sport since I was in middle school, maybe. Um, and I don't know that I stuck with it initially because I loved it, but because I loved the people that were in it. And it is a really amazing community. Um, I think that is true on the adaptive side. I think it's true on the non-adaptive side. And the great thing is, is that they all intermix. Um, you know, most of the athletes I work with are skiing on a club that is not necessarily an adaptive club. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, they're integrating and, and it's awesome. Everybody is stronger for it. And they're just really great people. And I know you guys are all really great people and super excited to get you guys more involved into that sport and are, you know, at least introduced to it if you haven't been already. Um, so I hope um, some of the information that we've given, I've given today will um, get you excited and um, give you enough information to get started or at least to start asking some of the questions at how to get started or what specifically do you need to do in your area to do so. Um, please check out the, um, athlete recruitment survey. It's also for guides um, on the US Paralympics Nordic skiing website. Fill that out. It just goes to myself and another coach. Um, and then we follow up with you and we figure out what resources are around. And we're super pumped to do so. We love hearing from people um, from all over. And, um, and then you can also shoot an email at that USP Nordic at gmail.com. Um, any questions? Yeah, we have a few in here. Um, we might not be able to get to all of them. So um, if we don't get to your question, please feel free to email it to Beth Ann. She's great. She'll always answer your questions um, or anyone on the Move United staff and, and we'll try to get it over to, to her. So someone had a question that I think is great about um, poles and if there's any adaptation in terms of if maybe you have some balance issues or if one side is stronger than the other. Are there adaptations for poles or how does, how does that work? 
Yeah, great question. Um, there's, there isn't like a market product for adaptation for polls. Um, having said that, I've seen a lot of different adaptations for polls. Um, we get pretty creative um, in our sport and um, everything from, uh, I'll say this, on the competition side for Paralympic Nordic skiing, if an athlete is classified in, in one of the classes that has, um, they, has an impairment on an arm or hand on one side, um, then, oh, <laughs> kitty cat. Um, then according to that classification in competition, they are only to use one pole, or if it's in the case that they, it's two poles, it's, it's no pole at all. And so for competition sake, um, so we're not looking at adaptations for that reason for competition. Now, having said that, there are many adaptations that people have made that want to ski with two poles that can't hold a typical grip. Um, sometimes it's, um, it's as simple as co-band to wrap around to help that pole hold that grip. Um, if you are having trouble holding a grip for one reason or another, the first thing I'm gonna say is make sure that you have a strap, a pole strap. If you go to anyone that sells any ski gear, um, they're, gonna, they're gonna know what, just say I want a good strap that holds my hand in place and they're gonna give you one of these versus the simple straps. This holds it into place and then sometimes, um, Co-band, Velcro, we, you name it, we can get things to hold around. These grips are pretty amazing and that you don't actually have to hold this. It, if you tighten this enough, it will guide and, and you can wrap an additional Velcro strap around and that pole will be held. Um, other adaptations I've seen, um, I've seen athletes that have uh, a short arm on one side above the elbow and they've literally had their prosthetist make just like a mold of their elbow and then they actually stick their shorter arm into that mold and then they have a strap that goes around and they're able to use that pole on that side. Um, it's actually the same, the ones I've seen is the same length pole as on the other side. They just adapted as to where they're putting that adaptation. Um, so there are lots of ways there's not like a go-to, this is what you do. Um, but what I will say is don't be afraid to go out and ski without poles or with one pole um, because you can do great skiing that way as well. And if you have both poles and can use both poles and you ski with me at some point, I'm going to take them away anyway. So it's good practice. It's good practice. Okay. Hopefully that helps. All right. Um, Lily is giving me the uh, we're at time uh, yeah. nod. So I do apologize. I know there was a lot of other questions on here. Um, there was some about how to get into competitive skiing. Um, so definitely just email Beth Ann and she'll get you that info there. Um, and some of these others we can answer afterwards. So I do apologize that we didn't get to all of those. But um, I just want to thank everyone for attending. Um, I hope you got in some movement, got your shoulders moving. I definitely did. Um, you will see a survey um, pop up once you leave this meeting. Um, it, please take some time to fill that out. It's really short and just helps us make sure that we're providing great opportunities for you all. Um, let us know what you thought of this session and make sure that as we move forward, we're um, doing things that, that work for you guys um, as well. Um, you can stay engaged and, and share your favorite ski spec memories um, using hashtag ski spec on all the social media channels. Um, so we encourage you to do that. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at further sessions throughout the week. So thank you so much, Beth Ann. Thank you everyone okay. for coming and we will um, see you all soon. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Please reach out. I'm excited to hear from you.